hair is longer, the nails are longer, the brows, I would argue that they're better. We're creating past viral videos. Uh. Hello and welcome to today's video. In the spirit of it being my birthday week, I figured I'd bring you something a little bit different something a little reminiscent of the past. And so as you can tell by the title of the video, I'm going to be not only recreating an old viral video, but also dissecting it a bit and giving you the backstory of the video. And basically my YouTube manager and I, a couple weeks ago, were talking about just like what videos, what content we're planning for the year. And this video came up and there are many reasons why it came up and I was actually thinking the reasons why we were talking about this are also the reasons why this video, I believe, went viral. So, if this is your first time here, my name is Sylvia, not L, as most of you think, and I'm a hairdresser, I've owned a salon studio, I'm a new mom now, and I've been doing YouTube for a little over 10 years. So, never done something like this, so I figured it was time. So, let's get into it. So the first thing I'm gonna to touch on is the importance of the video. Um, if, with every piece of content I feel like that I create, I always personally feel that I need to give value. And I feel like this video was one of the first videos where I really went in, um, in depth into like the basics of toning to really help you understand. And I think you guys found that valuable. And I think obviously that's one of the reasons why the video did well. Now the part that does fascinate me is the fact that this video was filmed at midnight in my first salon ever. I was exhausted. This was on a Saturday after at least a nine to 10 hour day on my feet. And I remember we had, Adam and I had dinner plans and I think we had like a quite a bit of a gap between, you know, when I finished work at the salon and our, uh, dinner appointment because my first salon was in San Francisco in Union Square. The the idea of like going home to then come back down to Union Square for dinner was just kind of silly. So Adam was like, well, why don't we film a video? And I was like, great idea. He was like, I'll bring the stuff to you. He brings the tripods, the cameras, the microphones, everything. He hauls everything in an Uber, comes to meet me at the salon. We set up, obviously everyone was gone. This was also the first week I believe I gotten the key to the salon. And that just like, I felt like such a big girl because obviously when you start working at a salon, like I think it takes like just a couple days before your paperwork and all that is done. So this was like the first key I held to a salon. Um, I was only at the time renting a chair in the salon, but this was just such a big deal. It also meant that I could close later than everyone else. And that ended up being the thing for me. There was like a joke in the salon that I was always the one to stay past everyone else. So my idea was like, okay, so I can film this and then like tomorrow we can have like a day off. Well, guess what? I didn't. But the funny thing was, was I filmed a video and it was just like not coming out right. It wasn't like the vibe. It wasn't like what, like what I was saying was just, I felt like I wasn't explaining it well. And then Adam's like, okay, I'm hungry. Like we're not gonna make our dinner plans. Like let's just order a pizza and a bottle of wine. And we literally sat at my station and inhaled a couple slices of pizza. And then I was like, okay, like let's do this. We've already set up like, you know, we, we should shoot something. And then I shot this video. So um, I feel like when I look at this video, I just looked so like I didn't care. I was just tired, but I feel like now looking back, it's like, how did anyone appreciate this or like this? Like, I just felt like, like now I feel like I need to like give it my all. I need to like, you know, present energy. Like everyone like wants that. Anyway, one of my main goals for the year this year is really to like go back to basics and not like only go back to recreating what you've already done, but scale it back. And like, I think it's, this is really important to do every couple of years to just like, in, in all areas of life, not just your career, but like what's important to you and go back to that and kind of like work your way back up and Basically, what you see here in this video is just a girl that's pretty freshly out of cosmetology school, so eager to absorb everything around her, but 
just as eager to like give you all that information and just share everything that I knew. And yeah, it was just funny that like circumstances were like the, the behind the scenes. Like, um, and then it, it's funny because I do have a pretty kind of like mellow demeanor, like chill kind of personality. And I felt like in videos, anytime that I was just talking the way I would talk to a friend essentially, I always got like, oh my gosh, are you high? Oh my gosh, you must be so drunk. And it was so funny because that, those videos where I got accused of like being on something, those were the videos that were like plainly just me. And then the video that, I mean, I wasn't like drunk, but I was like relaxed and tired. <laughs> relaxed and tired, that doesn't make any sense. I was tired from my long day, but relaxed because of the like possibly two glasses of wine. But I think another thing about this video is just how relaxed and how myself I was. So I feel like in my YouTube career, like I just, I'm not a speaker, if you can tell. <laughs> I'm not a public speaker. I'm more introverted naturally. Um, but the second you get me talking about hair or something that I'm super passionate about, obviously I can go on for hours. So anytime that I got hired to do something, you know, through YouTube, but like not for my own channel, I was always like, smile more, enunciate, speak louder. And I do feel that over time, I developed like a YouTube voice, which like I've heard of other people having and it, it, like, it makes me cringe a little bit, but I think subtly I did that as well. So a lot has changed and I, I think one thing that you need on social media and with anything that you, any field that you're in, you need evolution. You need things to change and improve, of course. That's what we're all looking for, essentially. Even if you think you don't, you you do need change. Can you imagine if you walked into a store that you loved and they always, always, always just had exactly the same thing? You would stop going. Like, I mean, you think like, oh, like that that's safe and that's amazing. But like when you think of something that, like Target, which when you think of Target, what do you think convenience, you think they always have stocked what I need. So they have all the basic essentials always there, but it does change whether it's through the seasons, um, whatever, and like that keeps you interested. So I think that's a very valuable um, piece of information. I feel like we all know this, but in any industry that you're in, I think that's just like important to to think about and at the beginning of the year especially. So anyway, that's a little bit of my take on this video. Um, another thing that I wanted to do um, kind of in celebration of being on YouTube for over 10 years and it being my birthday week is I did want to essentially recreate this video, not like word for word, but essentially give you the same information, hopefully in a different language or a different, more experienced voice now and basically give you the same information, hopefully a little quicker because I think that's one thing that has changed is we all want rapid information. But yeah, thank you for listening to this story time part of the video. Thank you to everyone who has been here from the beginning or at least since that video. So yeah, let's get into recreating this video. Hi, I'm also drinking coffee now instead of wine because new mom. <laughs> all right, so let's recreate this video and give you all the hot tips and information in hopefully quicker time. So this tool here is very important. Most of us hairdressers like to think that we get so good that we no longer need this. And although I do think there's some truth to that, I always think double checking is always a good idea. So, so what this means is to hold this swatch up so that you can 100% confirm what the level of the starting hair is. So. That piece of information is more important than anything. So when people, um, so when a client says like, I want this hair color, like how much does it cost? The reason why we can't just say a number like blonde costs this much versus brunette costs this much is because it all depends on what you're starting off with. 
So if you're starting here and you wanna go here, it is a completely different price than say you're here and you wanna go here. So the reason why I made this video years ago was because the second you understand this, I feel like you understand all the fundamentals of color and it will just help you understand either why you're not getting the color that you want or why it's expensive or why it takes multiple steps. So the title of the video was how to fix extremely orange bleached hair. And I specifically named it bleached hair because in a previous video I talked about um, removing unwanted orange colors and someone came on and was like, my daughter has orange hair and it's beautiful. You're talking about it in a very negative way. And obviously I was talking about unwanted orange hair that occurs when you're lifting the hair, which is very, very, very different than naturally red or orange hair. So this little swatch finder here signifies all the levels of hair that exists. Now in reality, there are reds. Now we have blues, greens, pinks, um, blondes, obviously brunettes, um, but every single hair color falls within this range from one to 10, 10 being the lightest. But essentially imagine then another row up here, which is the gold version of this, and then another row down here, which is the cool, ashy version of these. Now keep in mind, these colors down here, the really, really dark ones, you can't really add much ash or much gold to them because they're just dark. So imagine a black piece of paper, if you were to write on it with an orange marker, would you be able to see it? Not really. Um, versus on this side, if I were, if I had a pale, pale yellow piece of paper and I went in with an orange marker or a purple marker, you would absolutely see it. And that's why it's much easier to tone these levels over here than it is to tone these. The only way you can essentially change the tone of these levels here is by going darker one level. So essentially darkening that color. So say you're here and you don't like the tone that you have, you would have to go a little bit darker. So you have to add enough pigment for it to really be visible. But another very important thing to know is anytime that you see dark pigmentation in hair. If it looks this rich, it contains a ton of warmth and red tones. That's just what makes up rich, gorgeous, brown hair. So say if you're here, level three, and you're looking to go pretty light, you're going to expose all the warmth, so kind of reddish here, orange here, and then yellow here. You're going to expose all of those deeper pigments that are in the hair to get to where you wanna be. So one of the biggest mistakes that I see, and this was what I was really trying to convey in this video, is that when you're trying to lift, normally what ends up happening is you don't lift enough. So say you were here at a number three and you wanted to be, let's say a level eight or a level nine. Um, and you bleach and you say you only got to like here or here. Um, normally people expect to tone the hair here and get their end result. And that's, that's not going to happen. So you always have to lift to the level that you want and then tone at that level. That's how you're going to end up with your beautiful goal results. Now, one thing that is really important is toner fades really quickly. The reason for that is because it is like a stain only. It is essentially a deposit color only. When clients either do their hair at home or even in a salon and they say, you know, when I left the salon, it was a color that I really liked. And after one shampoo, um, my hair was back to orange or back to yellow. If, now, like I said, it is very normal for a toner to fade quickly, but if after one shampoo, your hair is back to a color that you don't like, that is absolutely because you are not lifted high enough. Because even if your toner were to fade, you should still be at that, you should still at least be at the level that you like. And if you kind of revert back to um, a lot of yellow or a lot of orange, that means that you're still back here in one of these levels. Now, I do also have to state, this is the natural state of all of these levels. So this means that this has been toned to a neutralized 
color. So that means there's not a lot of oranges, there's not a lot of ash. It's really neutral. Now, if we were going from here to here and our hair lifted to this neutral color, well, that would be so much easier and there would be no need for toner ever. But the reality is that our hair does not lift to a neutralized form. The raw version of these levels always contain a ton of warmth. So I hope that was helpful. If you've never watched the old video I'm referring to, I will link it down below in case you're curious. So anyway, this trip down memory lane was a lot of fun. And for those of you that have been here since that video, hopefully it was fun for you too. And a big happy birthday to all my fellow January babies. And yeah, thank you for clicking on this video. I love you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.